do this. All right, so about a week has passed since Captain Windrune and a skeleton crew aboard the Soul of Winter limped into the port of Saltmarsh with tales of a salvage operation gone awry and a fierce pirate attack that ended in the deaths of 16 members of the Lost Souls. Funeral proceedings were arranged by the Dralian estate. If you recall, uh, Runar, that's the fellow that you had been bringing the box back to. Uh, uh -huh. his, his estate put together the funeral proceedings for the lost members of the, the Soul of Winter with survivor benefits paid to the families of the fallen. The unknown crewmen that were aboard the ship uh, and, and or those who did not have any direct connection to the community were buried uh, with very little ceremony in the Salt Marsh Cemetery. Over the last week, all kinds of rumors have washed across the sleepy fishing town, tales of a valuable artifact recovered from a derelict ship, questions floating among the townsfolk regarding the backgrounds of some of the survivors. A murderous kenku and a demonic tiefling, both of whom skipped town upon returning to port as if running from the truth, or perhaps, as some suspect, back to their handlers in Monmerg, the Sea Princes. Then there's the suspicious corpsman from the Royal Marines, rich with his reward and shares from his lost crewmen, wasting too many days and too much coin on booze and companionship. <laughs> Disgraced by the death of his fellow crew members and guilty with his newfound riches. <laughs> and, and don't forget the corrupted cleric who's supposedly taken up residence in the old abandoned house east of town. Haunted, they say. Most folks figure the cleric intends to start a cult in service to some ancient fiend, likely to, to deliver the souls of Saltmarsh into the Shadowfell. But now, about a week later, the events and rumors... The, <laughs> the events and rumors surrounding Windrune's cursed voyage have faded a bit from local discourse, all but forgotten as prosperity shines upon Saltmarsh like a beacon, illuminating the way towards a safe port amidst the turbulence that lays just beneath the surface. Nevertheless, it's back to business in Saltmarsh. The West Wind Trading Company is hiring. So too is Captain Wolgar Windrune as he replaces his crew. Manistred Copperlocks and her dwarven miners have made a significant find, a new vein of silver that could change the face of Saltmarsh forever. People flow into Saltmarsh with the promise of employment and coin. This influx has brought all sorts into town, much to the pleasure of Kreb Schenker, proprietor of Saltmarsh's seediest tavern, the Empty Net, supposedly a nexus for smugglers, mercenaries, and even pirates. Rumors also tell of the cannibal pirate captain, Charlotte Volchek, who led the attack upon Windrune's crew, her ship now part of a cursed ghost fleet haunting the Azure Sea. To the north, the outpost of Burl has sent word of trouble in the Dreadwood. Meanwhile, the Odeland fishing fleet. Heck, even the smaller independent operators return to port each day, their catch is bountiful and profitable. News is circulating that Gellin Primewater has pledged a substantial donation to this council for the upcoming Festival of Sale, which promises to be a fantastic event. Spirits are high and jobs are aplenty. Just take a look at the job board hanging outside Who Watch Tower as an example. Today it's a bluebird morning in Saltmarsh, the warm sun shining down as the day begins, the town is bustling with potential. A cool breeze from the east pushes the azure sea towards town, the drone of the surf crashing against the breakwater, gulls squawking overhead, and the sounds from the market greet you as you wake. The three of you emerge from your separate rooms at the Wicker Goat and find yourselves sitting together at a common table feasting on the best breakfast in town. Just ask the owner, old Lankus Currid, he'll tell ya. Ah, that'll be three silver each, fellas. I hope you like the chowder. And here we begin. The day is yours. Chowder. <laughs> what would you guys like to do? You're all sitting together, finishing up your, your meal. Let's describe ourselves. Yes, please do. I am a dwarf of the hill variety. Um, I am. Uh, uh, I picture uh, the dwarf uh, offshoot of hill dwarves that he is from um, as being a little more uh, Slavic. 
um, a little more like um, if you know if you're familiar with like uh, um, like Warhammer and like some of those how their dwarves look where they've got you know the kind of curly ring uh, ring curl beards and that sort of thing um, so he kind of looks like that um, he has a big kind of black, well, well trimmed, well kept uh, beard. Um, wears his uh, uh, hair in kind of like a high ponytail, like he's, uh, you know, like shaved sides style. Um, not, you know, not like a, not like a, not like a cue, like a Chinese cue. More, of, he's still got the full head of hair on top, but um, long, kept in the tail. Um, he's uh, dressed in um, kind of common sort of traveling clothes. Um, nicer, um, like they, they look like he, you know, he, he spent money on them, um, but well-traveled um, now, um, has, a, has a pack. Um, a forge hammer um, prominently kind of extruding um, he has like a pair of um, gloves uh, like heavy kind of leather gloves with like iron um, or steel um, like embellishments on the knuckles um, kind of set on the table beside him That's what he looks like. Nice. Nice. And what's his name? Uh, Eren. Eren. Eren Kolbiter. Kirk, why don't you introduce um, your character? Uh, across the table from Eren Deer? Is that how you say your name? Uh, Eren. Like Aaron, but with some eyes. Ah, oh, very good. Um, across from Eren sits. So Baron Deer Shockfeather. Uh, I am a half elf. Uh, about, I'm I'm pretty young still, um, but I look very bookish. I'm tall, sharp skin, sharp chin, and pale skin. I have dark brown hair with what appears to be silver streaks running throughout my hair. Uh, my eyes are bloodshot, as if I've had too much to drink the night before. Um, I'm wearing. Um, basic traveling clothes, but I have over that um, some ar leather armor. Um, for some reason, I always seem to wear it. And it appears to be hand-stitched. Uh, uh, poorly patched, but it's functional. Maybe not the best patches, but definitely not the worst. Around my neck, I'm, I have a, a large horn. On my back, a lute. And on my hip, a lyre. And I'm wearing what appear to be really basic looking spectacles nice yes. runar okay uh runar um i am a human um i kind of always picture runar as being sort of like darker complexion like a native new zealander kind of um, he's like of athletic build, um, and he kind of keeps his hair kind of short and cropped and very practical. Um, he doesn't keep it a secret that he is a former Marine in a, from a large kingdom, um, a veteran of several battles i guess um i guess the most <laughs> vis visually apparent thing about him is that he walks around with two cutlasses um and as well as a long bow but um he's kind of known for two sword fighting um he wears a uh, leather armor and prefers to be kind of light and not weighed down especially when he's on the water 
Um, and right now he's uh, twirling his ale around in his... <laughs> looking at you guys. <laughs> And as you may know, there's some, uh, there may be some ru rumors swirling around town about him right now, and his connection to the uh, uh, the soul of soul of winter and its recent uh, voyage. What brings you to this inn, gentlemen? Uh, just. Looking for some ale after spending the day looking for work. And yourself? Ah, uh, they brought me into town for the funeral. Uh, I played some music. You may have seen me. Oh, are you a bard? I may be. I may be one of the best bards. Not to brag. Um. But it is my duty to help the people. And how about you, Erin? What brings you to town? Well, I'm looking for some folk. I'm may folk. Have, may have been lost, may not. Uh, been chasing rumors all across the Azure Sea. Rumors of what? Pirates, merchants. Yeah, you know, I've been in town a couple of days, uh, you know, the usual. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had some. I had a run-in recently with some pirates. The uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, but the boat was called the Black Trident. It was quite a battle. But me and my compa my companions and I were victorious in the end, and we left it in the ocean. What's the role ship? for? Let's just see if I've heard of that. How long? Ship. How long have you been in town for, Iren? A couple of days, maybe. Oh yeah. I feel like you've heard I feel of it. Like he's, okay. Yep. Those rumors that I talked to you, uh, that I mentioned, are have been floating around. So you can kind of pick and choose, but okay. chances are that you've heard of the Black Trident and the Soul of Winter. Although the details might, you know, might change depending on who you're talking to. Right. Exactly. Uh, <coughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> um, you, you know how that has all of that coin. I heard, I heard you're rich. I may have earned a, I earned my share. I'll just put it that way. Maybe, maybe you would like to hire me to play you a song. I'd pay a few coin for a song or two. I'm going to whip out my lyre. <laughs> as, as, you're get, as you're tuning it up, the, uh, the proprietor of the shop comes by and uh, clears off your plates and uh, kind of wipes down the table in front of you. Ah, a bit of a song. Perfect. Great way to start the day. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll, at this point, I'll. I'll take off uh, my hat and I'll put it down on the, on the table and I'll say, "You are all welcome to keep in, for this is for all of us." And I'll start playing a tune. Oh yeah, there you go. Nice. Is that your performance? Yeah, I'm gonna perform. Nice. Uh, it's kind of a song of of a rich um, person giving me a bunch of money after they've stolen a bunch of gold from pirates 
or something along those lines. So. <laughs> a very, very apropos to the situation. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you, uh, I don't know if you have verses picked out, but you, uh, you, you nail it. Like you put together some of the best uh, verses. You probably, you know, pluck a tune that you've been playing with for a while, but the lyrics come to you and, uh, and it's impressive to the crowd. It's a rousing, uh, rousing performance. And before you finish your final ale, please consider donating some gold to me and my deity, Aronian. A couple of the other diners, as they get up, after, you know, they clap and applaud, and as they get up to head out for the day, because it is the morning, uh, they drop a few copper into your, into, uh, in front of you. Uh, you you earn fifteen copper from the from the fisherman there, and there are eight silver as well, and then whatever Runar wants to pitch in. I'll throw in a, a couple silver. Spectacular. Well played, Bard. That was quite quite moving. Pat you on the back and I'll buy you a drink. I like the sound of that. Ah, uh, nothing better to wake up to than a flag and a veil. Uh, I. As you're sort of finishing up, a young boy uh, comes in. You see him run in the door, and he speaks with uh, with the proprietor. Um, Lankus and hands him something and then runs off and Lankus comes over to your table and says well uh fellas for the breakfast it'll be three three silver, three silver each please for breakfast and uh master runar i have i have a note for you and he ha he puts that down in front of you as he waits for his payment uh the, right. the food was three silver and then if you had a mug of ale it was four copper Four silver. Ah, thank you, kind sir. I'll give him four as well. What does the day hold for the three of you then? We'll see, I guess. Hmm. We'll yes. We'll see. Very well. Hopefully, good luck. I fully intend to follow this Runar guy <laughs> and play him music until his money runs dry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try, Bard, but you're welcome to travel with me today. Are you looking for work as well? Yes, I I, I wish to travel a little more. Um, I am from this area, uh, a little further south of here, or north, actually, sorry. Um, where am I? That's right, I don't know where I'm from either. Uh, I am from... I know where I'm from. I'm from a large city. Angleberd. Ah. Uh, you're from Angleberg Humperdinck? <laughs> he hails... Just Angleberg. He hails from long is... lines of hunk Humperdinks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm going to take a look at this note now. Kind of... Sure. Nonchalantly under the table sort of way. I'm going to check out what it says. It says, um, Honorable uh, Runar Degg, we ask that you come to the council hall at high noon today for a meeting with counselors. That's all it says. It's pretty vague, but it basically is uh, requesting that you Sounds come to like the council hall. Fired. <laughs> I gotta go talk to the authorities. Mm. Oh, it did. Wow. It the tone of it, uh, especially with the the opening with the honorable. They it, they put that in there on purpose. Um, like it sounds, uh, yeah, cordial. Right. Maybe too it's, cordial. Mm. It's not like one of those uh, like a summons. You know, like you are hereby summoned to appear in court. 
It's right. more, more like right. we, would, we, would like to, we would like an audience with you at high noon. You've got all this money now. Perhaps <laughs> your civic duty. Right. Um, hey, Dave. Uh, yeah. I don't know how much of my backstory you perused. I scanned um, it over, but I haven't had a chance to really dive into it yet. Okay. Would you Fair like to enough. Would you like to bring something to my attention? You could whisper it to me if you'd like. Uh, no, that's fine. I, I, I'm an open guy. If we were at the table, we'd do it this way anyway. Uh, but so ultimately, the gist of my character's backstory, as far as ultimately why he's uh, adventuring, is he's uh, looking uh, for information for his brother, uh, one of his brothers who uh, may or may not have been lost at sea, murdered, or whatever. Realized I, I didn't come up with the name of a ship that he would have been on. He was a merchant. We're a family of guildsmen, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. All right. Well, I would say to Runar, since Runar has um, a reputation of being a man about the sea. Um, Um, I should pull this up before I speak. Um, what was it about your brother that you're trying to get across? That he was. Well, no, I just so ultimately, my I'm looking for him. Oh, got it. I. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's like the last, the last thing is a year or so ago, Aaron's older brother, Kuda. Yep. His ship was lost. Ah. Was reported lost at sea. Um, okay. So ultimately, I'm out looking for him. Mm -hmm. um, because it turns out I am out of a job for other reasons as well. So, got it. Um, I'm out trying to track him down. Um, and I did not make up the name of a ship. Um, well, let's see here. You're in luck because. I have a bunch of ship names. You have just the table for me. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking to the right guy. Uh, let's see. Pirate ships. <clears throat> he wasn't necessarily a pirate, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess he could have been. Yeah, you don't. You never know. Yeah. Um, I've got a whole bunch here. I'm just going to pick one, all right? Cool. All right, it was called the Griffin Wing. Griffin Wing. The last letter you received from him mentioned that he had uh, joined up uh, with a crew on the Griffin Wing. Cool. I will say uh, <coughs> to uh, Runar kind of after, because you, you read that note to yourself. Right? Yeah. You didn't yeah. like read it out loud or anything. No. <laughs> Allow me to present my laundry. Here it is. Um, so I, you know, I, I, obviously I'll see you read it. Um, and I will say, uh, uh, so, uh, Mr. Degg? Yes. Is Degg your family name? Yes. Um, I don't know, given your history, have you heard of a ship called the Griffin Wing? Uh, I haven't heard of the Griffin Wing before. Uh, it may be before, they may have departed through this area before I got here. Hmm. However, I've just been, re it's just been requested that I meet with the city the city leaders at this council hall here in Saltmarsh. Perhaps they may know more about the Griffin Wing. Hmm. You're welcome to join me if you like. I'm heading over there soon. Excellent. Well, my name's Erin. Erin, nice to meet you. And I say All that right. in dwar I say that in Dwarvish, because I know Dwarvish. 
Nice. I say likewise. It also on Gorvish. I'll, I'll look at you both like. What? And how about you, Bard? Care for to, care to go for a walk? I have a song about this. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll sure spare you, you this time. I'll put my lyre on my hip and I'll say, lead the way. <laughs> All right. All right. So you, you step out for, uh, the front door of the Wicker Goat. Um, and it is a beautiful day in Salt Marsh. The ocean breeze is, is blowing across the hillside. The Wicker Goat is up on top of a hill overlooking the Kingfisher River that empties into the, the bay of salt marsh and you head, you start walking south towards the ocean. Along the way, uh, you pass uh, a variety of small homes, some, some shops that are nondescript and closed uh, for the moment, but you, there are a lot of people on the street walking towards a large stone bridge that crosses the Kingfisher River. And uh, where, you, where do you want to head first? You, you're, you're familiar with the area, so let's see. Um, I've, okay, I've got you on this page here, so you can see what salt marsh looks like. So that would be the bridge right here. Yep, right? that's the bridge. Let me give you... So that's the shark fin bridge, it's called. And it's got, like, buildings and shit on it. Yeah, exactly. So it's a long... Uh, it's a long bridge spanning the river, and it's got shops and even a couple of homes on, on along its length. Um, and there are people crossing. Most of the people are headed east uh, across the bridge towards the more of the downtown merchant area and the docks where a lot of the activity is happening. Already the docks are somewhat bare because the fishing fleets have already gone out. Um, it's probably, I don't know, about... Two, two to three hours after sunrise, so maybe about nine o'clock in our time. Uh, okay. But there, the 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 town is bustling with uh, potential. And as you cross the bridge, you see you look out over to the south, and you can see the docks out in this direction. Nice. As you continue down, uh, you you head down into the weekly, there's a uh, market area that you pass right here. Boop. Oh. Right, oh, over right the there. Yeah. Yep. All right, uh, yes, the Wicker Goat, way over here on the other side of town. Yep, this is where you were staying. Yeah. Yep, which oh, okay. is All the right. first, not only is it the first inn that you that you find when you walk, come into the city. It's also rumored to be the oldest inn in, uh, in town as well. Okay. So it's got a bit of a historic value and it's, it's pretty nice. A lot of dwarves stay there. And where does this road go? If this is the first inn that you come to through town? That road heads north towards uh, Burl. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Yep, it head, heads north uh, towards Burl by way of um, the Silver Stand Forest. Okay. In Keeland proper. Yep, yep, this is all part of the Keeland Empire. Mm -hmm. Dave, is that, the, is that the empire that I was... Yes, you, you served in their navy. Okay. And the, the main naval port is to the east um, in a town called Seton, S-E-A-T-O-N, which is a military compound uh, slash town, uh, slightly bigger than, than Salt Marsh, but less focused on commerce and more focused on uh, protection of this, uh, this section of the Azure Sea coastline. Is Sorry, did you say that was like the largest city? Yeah, Is it's 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 larger than uh, than Salt Marsh. Okay. Salt Marsh is has around thirty five hundred people in it. 
and Seton is more like ten thousand, I think. I'd have to oh, check. Wow. I'll have to check that for sure. But it's 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 bigger. It's probably twice the size. So what would you guys like to do uh, while you're kind of waiting to get into the to go visit the counselors? What, uh, you've got a what's market. market. Yep, yeah, you've got a market here. So this is basically built for the the fishermen. This was one of the early, early uh, sort of commerce posts in town. All kinds of uh, like the fresh catch of the day is being sold here. Some some folks are here selling art and trinkets and tools and all kinds of things. Um, but largely fish, it's a fish market. Uh, okay. um, there are a dozen long tables in the center of a small square where you can sit down and eat. Uh, and there are a variety of, of vendors circling the market or, or the, uh, the square. If you're interested in shopping, uh, there's, there's all kinds of stuff there. Pretty much anything in the player's handbook that's less than 150 gold on page um, should have that open. <laughs> on page 150 yeah anything up to 150 gold is is available for purchase hmm. so pretty much everything on that page aside from the spyglass <laughs> sorry I'm just opening it now what what uh, page did he say that was uh, 150. 150. I'm just going to pop on some of these other labels here so you can see what, what some of these other areas are. The council Hall is just a little bit further down on the left-hand side of the, of the road. Uh, there is a fish processing plant at the, at the, uh, just past the corner, past the turn in the road. I'm gonna buy 10, 10 feet of chain and 10 iron spikes. Okay. Six gold total. Sounds good. Um, you said they didn't have uh, the. What's that? Did you say they had uh, like a looking um, like a uh, spyglass? They do not. The spyglass it would okay. not be available in this market. Oh, okay. I see. That's a lot. It's a too much money. It's too expensive. Um, also, yeah. Go ahead. I'll, I'll also look around and see if there's any amulets that have uh, Heronius's symbol on it. Sure. Uh, roll a perception check for me. Okay, um, I have a, uh, I have a long sword wow, that nice. I took off a body at the, uh, I t that I took off a body on the trident. Okay. Um, could I sell that? Sure, you could. Uh, One of these guys? Yeah, you could ask around. There aren't too many weapons that are that you don't see many weapons there's a couple of like fish fillet filleting knives and tool type blades okay, um, so no weapon. one of the vendors tells you to uh to go down to the dwarven anvil and maybe there's maybe they would be interested either that or who watch tower might be interested in buying the sword for their uh for the town's guard potentially okay um i guess in that case i'll buy um I'll buy the fishing tackle. Does that mean you can just fish with it? You don't need anything else? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, they I'll can buy get a fishing pole and tackle. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get the fishing tackle, and then I'm going to buy a grappling hook. Okay. Easy enough. Yes. 
You, after spending a couple uh, days, you also know that there's a second tavern called the Snapping Lion that's right across the street from the market. Um, let's see. Number 13 there. Um, the Dwarven Anvil, they, you, you probably, Andy you've, or Runar, you probably already know where that is, but they, the guy tells you where it is just in case you don't know. Number 17 down there. Runar, I will say, um, uh, I'll kind of, uh, after you've uh, finished inquiring with that guy about the sword and stuff, I will say, mm -hmm. uh, uh, may I? And I'll hold out my hand, like, to look at, because I want to check out the sword. All right, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll pull it out, look at it. Um, uh, I want to... I don't know how we handle this in 5e, but um, I want to appraise it, essentially, mm. as a weaponsmith myself, a member of the Dwarven Guilds, of, of uh, a master smith. Yes. I would say that's probably going to be an intelligence check with adding your proficiency bonus. All right. And Kirk, you were looking for a, a medallion of the of Hieronius. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's. I don't know. Yeah, you have a hard time telling the the. Good luck. The degree <laughs> of craftsmanship. It's it's a pretty nondescript sword. It doesn't give you any hints of its of its. Uh, where it came from or who the sure. smith was. Um, fair and dear, you, you are looking through some of the trinkets. There's, you know, uh, vendors with rings, jewelry makers. There are some religious people from the, who worship uh, a, a god related to the ocean named Procan uh, that have some of their, their um, different paraphernalia for sale but you also find among some of the jewelry vendors a, a medallion that has a silver lightning bolt clenched in a fist uh, etched into it it is made out of like a porcelain kind of clay hardened clay material very fine craftsmanship i'll attempt to barter for it Ah, you like that? A woman kind of looks up as you're as you're handling the the amulet and looking at it. That would be uh, one silver for that. I made it myself. One silver. Yeah, that seems fair actually. <laughs> and because you did such a great job, I'll actually give her two silver. <laughs> oh my my! So generous. <laughs> you must be travelers. Please tell me. What news do you have from from the north? Well, it's not a lot of good news. You oh know, my, it seems my. it seems the the road's been taken over. It's I, myself. I'm from Anglebird. If I don't know if you're familiar, it's no, I've never it's heard a great of it. Village. Uh, you know, it's every day I I see I see more and more people I just don't like. Mm, oh, that sounds horrible. Well. Welcome to Saltmarsh, where I am sure you'll find all kinds of fortune and adventure. Perhaps you could direct me to the uh, the job board. I hear, oh, yes, I hear work yes. is, is a plenty. Indeed, indeed. Uh, probably you'll want to check in with the town's guard at Hool Watch Tower. And she gives you a description uh, of where it is. It's back across the bridge. And then uh, the first road to the north will take you out to Hool Watch Tower. And she says, um, you'll, want to, you'll want to chat with, oh, well, <coughs> might as well ask for Elandir <coughs> Fearborn. He is the uh, captain of the guard. And uh, if he's not there, I'm sure one of his men will help you. Dave, we're still at the market. Yeah, Just you're still at the market. Ah, thank um, you, thank you for the info, Miss. She kind of takes the Madam. as she takes the silver pieces from you. She starts kind of polishing them with her apron, like she's cleaning them off, and making them look really shiny. She's pretty. She's pretty happy. I'm gonna take a little offense to that, but 
but I'm not going to show that. Okay. Um, just looking around, um, I know this is somewhat of a fish market, but do they happen to have any of these, uh, um, the potion of healings, healing potions around? Mm, no, they don't. Um, you don't I'm going to ask anything like that. I'm going to ask the nearest stall mm -hmm. worker guy if he knows of where I could find a healing potion in town. Okay. And he will tell you, uh, ah, yes, magical items. Yeah, you'll, you'll be wanting to chat with Captain Zendros out at the, uh, at the faithful quartermasters of Ayuz. They seem to have have quite a selection of, uh, or access to at least, different magical items. And uh, most more than likely, you'd be able to find yourself a healing potion from them, I would say. Ah, thank you. All right, so I guess I'll start making my way towards the, the dwarven anvil. Okay. Is that where you said the uh, sword could be sold? Yep, that's right here. All right. Number 17 there on the map. Right. Um, do I, I mean, do I still have time before the... Oh, yeah, yeah, you've got time. Council Hall. Yeah. Right. So, Ferrandir and uh, Iren, are you, what are you doing? Are you yeah, going I'll, with? I'll go along with him to this dwarven anvil. Yeah, I'll, I'll also tag along. Okay. I'll be with my, with my new holy symbol in my hand, all like, ooh, giddy. So a couple things that you notice as you're walking through the market, there are a fair number of dwarves in town um, shopping, and they look, you know, they look like they're that they're living in town. So that's kind of of interest to you. There's not, especially along the coast, you don't see as many dwarven uh, communities. Mostly uh, from Ulek. That's the dwarven nation just to the right of Keelan, between Keelan and. Kumars. Probably, yeah, they're probably Ulek migrants, I would say, that have come here to uh, for a variety of reasons. But you do also know that there is a mine nearby, mm -hmm. um, a dwarven mine, and, and it, the thought is that they are part of the family oh, of okay. some of the miners and that sort of thing. Oh, sure, sure, yep. sure. Um, but yeah, you walk you walk down the uh, down the street. Everybody, roll a perception check for me. Perception. Nice. <laughs> okay. All right. And they're just looking at the clouds, apparently. <laughs> okay. Um, great. So you all keep continuing down the road. And up on the left, you find yourselves standing in front of the Dwarven Anvil. There, uh, above the, the front door to this place is a swinging wooden sign with an anvil carved in it. And you can hear the clanging of hammer on metal from inside. Uh, is there a is there a guild mark? There is not a guild mark. Okay. On the sign. Sure, sure. Hmm. How pedestrian. <laughs> All right, I'm going to step inside and see if I can sell this sword. Okay, you walk in, and as you, as you enter, you look straight ahead of you, and you see a woman, a human woman, pounding on some metal at the forge. And it's, it's, the, the instant you walk in, the heat just kind of hits you, and it's really hot inside. There is a human female at the forge and a young uh, human male uh, assisting her. All right. Um, excuse me. I have a sword that I would like to sell. Would you be interested in buying it? The woman continues to work, and you just kind of notice that she says something to the boy, and he comes over and, and says, uh, where'd you get the sword? Let me see, let me see. All right, I'm going to take it out and show it to him, but not answer the sword part. The where I got it. Okay. Is it a long sword? 
Yeah, it says it's a long sword. Okay. Yeah. Hey, we could we could uh yeah, we'd buy it from you, but we'd just melt it down and use it for parts. Nothing too special about this. Uh, we'll give you, a, I don't know, five silver for it. <coughs> I'm going to kind of scoff at that. I can't get twice that much anywhere else. <laughs> he, just, he starts laughing. Uh, that word, Okay. What, what do you want for it, then? Well, I don't know. It says here, in, <laughs> just referencing the book here, it says that... What book are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Fancy pants knows how to read. In Seton, you can sell long swords for 15 gold piece. I... It's a long walk to Satan to sell a to sell a shitty ass sword. Yeah. You can, uh, if you want, you can try to persuade him, uh, but it would be a disadvantage. So you can roll a persuasion check if you'd like. All right, I'll do it. Are the other are the two of you watching this this uh, haggling go down? Yeah, and we're oh, laughing yeah. to ourselves. <laughs> yeah. All right. I like this kid. First time you've ever talked to a child, my friend. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that didn't work. Oh, uh, Runar, Runar! <laughs> uh, the the boy says, "Hey, look, man, Mister, we got I got a lot of work to do. Uh, you want to sell the sword or don't you?" Yeah, boy, do you know who this guy is? No. Should this I? Is Runar Deg. You can see, kind of. You can you notice that he acknowledges in his mind like oh folks around town say he killed a whole bunch of pirates just to get this sword yeah and then picking Maybe. up on the on the i'm gonna say yeah this off a dead pirate pirate might be, sword. Able, to, might be able to get a good price with a story like that He kind of rolls his eyes and he says, <laughs> he says, I know you're kind of a big shot in town and everything, but we, we got, we got more metal than we know what to do with. And we got, we've got a log book, a backlog of orders, 10 miles long, mister. So I'll give you five silver for it. for that rusted out blade. If you don't want to have to carry it around anymore. Yeah, take it. He uh, he takes the sword and sets it on the counter and pulls out a little little box of, of coin and gives you five silver. Anything else I can help you fellas with? Nah, that should do it. You gonna kill any more any more of them them pirates? If I feel like it. Is it is it true what happened out there? I heard about the the attack. Everybody died except for you. That's right. What are you trying to say? Nothing, Almost mister. I lost my life on that boat. Just curious what happened. I owe many of them men, many of those men my life. Yeah. Sounds dangerous. Anyways, I got to get back to work. He uh, he walks away and goes back helping his helping his mother. Runar, is, What's, is this how you got rich? <laughs> no, I just didn't want to carry that thing around anymore. <laughs> but I mean, I wouldn't have given you two silver for that. Two silver? Yeah, I wouldn't have given you two silver. Hmm. Well, yeah. after my own heart. Um, How's, what's uh, what's her form like? Roll a perception check. Mm -hmm. 
Roll. Perception. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a pretty low DC based on your background, but she yeah. she definitely has command of the anvil and the nice. forge. She looks like she knows what she's doing. Uh, one thing you also recognize as you're kind of just scanning the the building, the interior of the building, there's a small shrine to Moradin that's mm. under the eaves. It does. It looks slightly neglected, but there is a shrine there. Excuse me. Uh, and you also notice that the tools that she's using are are of high quality. Nice. Very high I quality. Will, like the shrine looks dusty. The shrine looks a little dusty. Hmm. I'll kind of walk over to it and. Give it a little dusting. Okay, just kind of like, blow some of the dust feet. off of it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Put a. I'll put a. A, a gold like, I'll put a gold piece. Mm. On the shrine. All right. I'm not a, a. Direct follower of Morden, but. It's a. Just gotta know his trade. Yep, I like it. That's enough to earn you an a inspiration point. Nice. Your fucking inspiration. <laughs> All right. Take out my lyre and start playing that. <laughs> I'm going to want uh, five silver pieces every time you sing that song. It's copyright <laughs> material. <laughs> I'm going to immediately stop, put my liar away. <laughs> <laughs> Can't afford the licensing for that one. Uh, so it's probably like, it's about an hour from when you need to meet the council, roughly. So there's, uh, there's more that you can do in town, or we can fast forward to the council meeting. You guys want to... Pop by the uh, the job board, see if there's anything we can do to earn some extra. I mean, maybe not you, Runar. You seem loaded, but I'll go look. Guess we're Perhaps here. there's info. Where'd you say that was? Uh, the Hool Watch Tower. And someone asked where that was. I think it was. Uh... Yeah. Uh, Farron Deer. Farron Deer. Still trying to get the names right. Farrandir. <coughs> um, the Hool Watch Tower is up on the hill over here. Way back that way. Yep. Where's the, uh, where are we headed? The, Dr the Drawlian Estate? No, the right here. Hall, number yep, 14. 14. Oh, yep. And you're Jack currently yeah. at 17. Ooh, that is kind of out of our way. Yeah, how about we'll go by those the job postings on the way back to the Wicker Goat. I concur. All right. So we'll uh, we'll move along to the council hall. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is a large brick building, uh, sort of on the main drag, and it contains the offices of the town council and the chamber where they discuss town business. And as you, as you walk up to the door, you see a man standing there uh, smoking a pipe and kind of leaning up, against the, leaning up against the wall next to the door. And he, uh, he quickly taps out his pipe as you approach and puts it in his pocket. And he says, ah, Master Runar, gentlemen, welcome. My name is Gellin Primewater. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Thank you for promptly arriving uh, here at the council hall. Please follow me. And he uh, opens the door and walks into the council hall. He leads the three of you through a couple of different hallways. And then he gets to a closed door. And before opening the door, he turns. And everybody kind of stops and looks at him. And he says, well, uh, I'm not sure the meaning of the rest of your party. Master Runar, but we do have business with you to discuss. Ah, yes, these are friends I met today. You're welcome to discuss. Feel free to discuss business. 
Very well. Right this way, gentlemen. And he guides you into the into the council hall. And in this room is a large round table. And there are a couple of different people sitting at this. And I'll describe each one of them. There is a female human that is sitting at the head of the table, at the head of this kind of oblong circular table. Uh, she ha she's kind of gruff looking. She's got grain hair. It's kind of short cut. Her, the skin of her face and her arms and her hands is very wrinkly, as if bearing the marks of someone who's lived a life outside. Uh, she says, ah, welcome. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, next to her is a, is a young man sitting there. He is very well dressed, slight build, uh, sharp features, and a big toothy smile. And he's, He doesn't say anything, but he just kind of nods as you approach and find a chair. Then there is a, a, very, uh, a very burly older man who, uh, and he's standing at the window, kind of looking out the window as you enter and kind of turns to, to see you come in. And he's got a town's guard uh, armor on. You can tell that he's got sort of the uniform of the local town's guard who you've seen walking around there. The town's guard is pretty robust in this uh, town, and so you've seen them around town in the last couple of days, certainly. And he, uh, he kind of bows and, and, and says hello. And then there is a female dwarf that's sitting with her feet up on the table. Uh, she, she looks very uh, uninterested in uh in the proceedings or in what the conversation was before you came in but as you enter she drops her feet down to the floor and she looks to you and the man who walked you in he says let me introduce to you uh ida Owland." and he that's he gestures to the the woman at the head of the table who greeted you the short gray hair um and then this young man here with the big smile on his face is anders solmore and this, and our towns, our captain of the town's guard, of course, is Elendar Fireborn. And this, my friends, this dwarvish woman of vast means is Manistrid Copperlocks. And I'm, again, am Gellin Primewater. Thank you for joining us. Town Council, I present to you Runar Degg. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, I'm not acquainted with these other two gentlemen. Please introduce yourselves. I am Farron Deer Shockfeather. Perhaps you've heard some of my songs. I can give you a refresher if you need. Hmm. Sounds wonderful. We should we should discuss later. Maybe you can play at the festival of, festival of sale. We'd love to. Ah, I would love to have you play for us. I would love nothing more. Ah, wonderful, the wonderful. Of sale. I mean, the festival of sale. Wonderful. And uh, you find a couple seats, and you're able to sit down. I would introduce myself as well. Yes, please do. Um, I am Guildsman Erin Colbiter. Ah, welcome. And you see, um, you see the dwarven woman kind of look you up and down to see. If she's kind of like trying to eye you up to see if she knows who you are. Do I know you? Where are you from? The Iron Hills. Ah, very good. Well, if you're looking for work, we've got ourselves a mine. We could always use an extra set of skilled hands. Hmm. A kind of harumph. A and little disdainfully. Uh, with that, Gellin Primewater addresses the group, and he, he, he doesn't sit. He stands and is kind of like walking back and forth, sort of with this air of importance. And um, he's a very well-dressed uh, man, neatly trimmed beard, very fancy wardrobe. And um, he's got, you know, a really nicely, uh, uh, nicely crafted hat with a feather in it. Um, very colorful clothing. He says, Master Runar, we, we heard of your, 
your, the role that you played as the head of security on the Soul of Winter and that you fought valiantly to protect the ship from capture by the Black Trident. Obviously, there were some se severe losses in, in the process, but you did manage to achieve uh, the goal of returning to Saltmarsh with an important item for Master Dralian. Uh, while that item and Master Dralian's affairs are of his own and not important to the nature of this meeting, your ability and your loyalty to achieving the goals of the quest that you were sent on certainly have uh, piqued our interest. Well, I'll just come out and say it. And uh, the, the woman at the head of the table, Edda, says, Yes, just get to it, will you, Gellin? Uh, he says, We have learned some very alarming information of a smuggling ring that has been recently infiltrated. During that operation, we, our agents recovered a, a map and information that indicates that there is a lair of lizard folk nearby who, as it seems, have been purchasing an alarming amount of weapons and have been arming themselves. To what end, we know not. But we do have concerns, given the proximity of the of the lair to Saltmarsh. As you are well aware, the town of Saltmarsh is experiencing a bit of a resurgence in business affairs, which is good for all of us in town and all of us around this table. He kind of looks around at the, at the other council members and says, we're very interested in hiring you and, and your team to investigate the nature of the lizard folks call to arms, identify whether or not they intend to attack Salt Marsh so that we may prepare ourselves for battle, discover their motivation and return to us with information. Is this something that you'd be interested in? Well, what do we know about these the lizard folk has anybody met them we have not met a one of them we have not met them but it is also strange to learn that they are arming themselves at such an alarming rate it could be nothing but we are taking precautions as the shepherds of this community And I trust you're willing to pay for this? Uh, at that point, uh, the captain of the town's guard, Ellender Fireborn, steps forward and says, Indeed we will. We will pay you for the information if you are able to infiltrate the lizard lair and bring that information back to us. And then uh, Manistred Copperlocks pipes in. She says, Well, tell them how much it is. How much is there are they going to get paid? And Ellender says, we've got 500 gold pieces set aside for reconnaissance of the lizard lair. Uh, Farron Deer is going to step up. I will do it. I will absolutely do it. <laughs> and, oh, uh, sorry. You were talking to Runar. I'm going to sit back down. You know, I'm just going to shoot him a look to maybe sit down. Um. I will consider your offer and let you know by the end of day what I decide. At this point, uh, Edda, who is the woman with the short cut hair and the, and the wrinkly face, she, she gets up and she says, Very well, we look forward to hearing back from you. Please keep this information to yourselves. We do not want to alarm anyone in town here. It's possibly just a misunderstanding but it is our due diligence to investigate and identify for sure. The sooner you can let us know, the better. And Gellin, Gellin says, very well then. I consider this to be a successful meeting. 
Is there anything else that we have to discuss with Master Runar and his team? And they all kind of look at each other and say That's nothing. Yeah, I'm going to just say, yes, my companion Erin here has a question for you. Are, um, are any of you familiar with a ship named the Griffin's Wing? Let me, let me roll and see. <laughs> Damn! Uh, womp, 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 womp. Yeah, Anders, uh, the young man who's sitting at the table who hasn't said anything at this point, turns and says, uh, Yes, I've heard of the Griffin Wing, uh, a merchant vessel. What of it? Well, my... My brother, my, one of my older brothers, was sailing on that vessel around a year ago, and we received word that it was lost. Mm. And here I am chasing those rumors down. That is a terrible fate, <laughs> but not uncommon. That's what, uh, what Ellen Deere says, and Anders says... <laughs> When was the last that you heard of this, Griffin Wing? Uh, it's been uh, uh, maybe a year and a half since we've had official word, received a letter, that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, the young man says, I'd be happy to look into it for you if you'd like. I would appreciate that. Thank you. He pulls out a little uh, pad of paper um, from his pocket and writes down, writes in it a little bit, takes some notes, and then he puts it away. Very well. Well, consider our offer, and please do get back to us. Time is of the essence. And then uh, Galen says, I'll show you back out. And he walks, he starts walking towards the door. Should we take a five-minute break? Uh, sure. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that yeah let's do sure. five, five minutes. Okay. I'm back. We're going to do a five-minute break. Oh, okay. Okay, so are we all here? No, yeah, I am. All right, yeah, that, was a, that was a joke. I'm not here. I'm not here, man. Okay, so you exit back onto the street. Uh, it's just a little bit after one o'clock, we'll say, in the afternoon. You were there for about forty-five minutes or so, and uh, yeah, the day is the day is yours to do as you wish. All right, I'm gonna. Just turn to uh, Erin and Fair and Deer, and ask them just straight up. Uh, I didn't want to talk about it in front of the whole council while they're sitting there staring at us, but would either of you two be interested in taking this job with me? We'd split it three ways. Um, honestly, I, I would like to do this job but i would i don't know how we're i mean it's is this just reconnaissance we don't want to start a war here right and i'm looking yeah. at you dwarf but i i i and i'm gonna say that dwarf um i i, I don't think you're very sneaky <laughs> hmm. well <laughs> how about it you're in you comfortable with reconnaissance work? Sure. We survive. We get money. Might I'm less money worried about to... surviving and more worried that we're going to start a war. Right. Well, that's definitely the last thing I want to get tangled up into is to get dropped in another quagmire like I ran into on my last voyage. 
So trust me, I'm not going to be looking to poke any kind of hornet's nests in this process. Um, I I'm going to the point of us doing this is to not start a war. Right. We're just three random guys running yeah. in a van. <laughs> so let's say you more. So the least I can do if the Sanders is going to seriously look into my brother's ship, so I'm in. Yeah, and you know, you know, if this goes well, if you guys are proved to be worthy companions, you know, you never know what the future holds. It may turn into no, something, some sort of money-making venture between the three of us. All right, Except, it, let's do it. Okay. Well, with that, Dave, yeah, I'm going to kind of just turn around and go back and inform them. So as you I'm turn going. to uh, to do so, everybody roll a perception check first. Nice. Uh, there you go. Nicely done, everybody. Uh, Ferendir and Runar, uh, as you sort of come up with your decision, you turn, you see this, uh, this well-dressed human male in a long coat walking towards you, uh, rather earnestly. And he's kind of waving his hand up like to you, uh, Master Runar, Master Runar. That's me. He, uh, he comes up and he's, he's breathing heavy as if he was, he was rushing. He says, Master Runar, we've been looking for you. I come on behalf of the Mariner's Guild. We, we heard that you had stuck around town and we have, well, we have, a, we have an issue that we, we believe that you would be potentially able to help us with. Uh, I don't know if you're looking for employment, but um, if you're interested in, in talking with the some of the guild members, uh, I can I can take you to them. Hmm. Huh. So I'm gonna turn to my companions here and be like, "Let's see what they have to say. Could be more coin in it." it All right, lead on. Your reputation is proving to be a lucrative <laughs> business. <laughs> lead on, my friends. Come, come, uh, and he he leads you down the street. Uh, and up to what you, you know to be, because you've been there before, it's the Snapping Lion, which is a pretty popular tavern and inn. And it's, the way it's built is kind of cool. It's built from like a bunch of decommissioned fishing vessels. Definitely, it's got like the nautical anchor bar kind of theme going. Um, smell of fish permeates the place. And um, there are a couple of fishermen who are already back from the morning, uh, the morning, their morning business, eager to spend coin on a very interesting spirit that is made here at the Snapping Line. It's called, wait for it, wait for it, Claw Wine. Wow. Mm -hmm. And this uh, this young uh, this young well-to-do man uh, ushers you in, and and he calls out. He says, "Hannah, uh, four claw wines, please." And then he continues on to this table in the back, the far back of the of the hall, where there is another man uh, sitting, and he looks like he's already into his his claw wine as well. Please, please come, come and sit. Yeah. He says, All right. follow him over. Yeah. He says, my name is Laszlo Yannick, and my friend here is uh, Radovan Strozny. Ah. Yeah. Is this, is this that Runar? You're looking at him. Ah, very good. 
Very good, Laszlo. Please sit, please. As you get settled in, uh, the, the, a woman, a young human woman comes up with uh, four large, uh, large mugs of a very pungent, thick and brothy looking wine, kind of greasy looking. Um, I don't know if any of you have had this before, but it is a, it's a unique wine that's made from lobster meat and potatoes. <laughs> so it's fermented chowder. <laughs> mm -hmm. Basically, Whoa. it's basically Jesus fermented chowder. I feel yep. like Runar would be acquainted with this tr this drink. I'm sure. Uh, well, let's get right to it then, shall we? Radovan kind of prepares himself for for what he's about to tell you. He says. Have you ever heard of Abbey Isle? Kind of looks at the three of you. No. Well, it's an important island off the coast here. Mariner's Guild has for decades sought to acquire the island and erect a lighthouse to help guide the way for ships coming into port. At certain times of the year and under certain conditions, the the seas around the entrance to the Kingfisher River can be quite treacherous for some of our mariners, and, well, we'd like to change that as best we can. Unfortunately, the Abbey on the Isle has a set of residents who have been unwilling to work with us on a deal. We've been unable to broker the purchase of the Abbey. Well, things have changed, apparently. We've caught wind that... Pirates recently attacked the Abbey. Now the clerics who live there have been reported to be decimated by the pirates. And we sent a contingent of our members to investigate and negotiate. Found that most, if not all, of the pirates had been slain. Those that were still alive, we were able to drive off. But we were unable to land upon the isle and make way to the abbey itself. That's where you come in. <clears throat> Given your recent endeavors upon the soul of winter and the skill you've shown in protecting those that were able to live and I apologize for discussing matters that may be still painful given the loss of life what you did was honorable we believe that you and your team could be of service to the Mariners Guild we need information we need a landing party to explore the island, clear out the threats that may still lie within, so that we may proceed with our plans to build a lighthouse and protect the fine people of this town. Mm. Do you suspect that there are still pirate fighters on the island? It is uncertain, however, many were slain on the beach when we did our initial reconnaissance, and we drove off what were left. It is possible that some made their way to the abbey, but given the substantial amount of smoke emanating from the abbey that we could see from the water... We believe the Abbey to be all but destroyed. So what would you like us to do about it? We would like you to land upon the beach and investigate the remains of the Abbey. 
determine with 100% certainty if there are any survivors and encourage the survivors to leave the island now that their abbey has been destroyed. These clerics are cunning and shrewd, but we believe that in their current situation may influence them to be more willing to negotiate with us. What, uh, what deity do these clerics worship? Well, none that I'm aware of. I'm a bit of an atheist myself. No offense. Oh, none taken. I've heard strange stories. There's always been rumors of dark worships. Rumors designed to steer the Mariner's Guild and others away from attempts to acquire the island for more civic purposes. And these pirates, were they part of a particular crew? Hard to say, but you can make the assumption that any pirates on the western extent of the Azure Sea are likely in league with the Sea Princes. At some level, they control most of the smuggling and the slaving that goes on in these parts. It's deplorable. Right. Establishing a stronghold on the isle would, be, would go a long ways to protecting the people of Saltmarsh from their reach and ensuring the safety of our Mariner's Guild members. Given your status in the community and your recent successes, shall we say, we believe that you could potentially serve the community well by helping in this regard. What say you? How much are you willing to pay? Ah, an excellent question. We have collected a sum, a large sum from our membership. Given the importance of this mission and what it means to all of us, we have been able to gather 500 gold pieces that will be provided to you upon return with the information and, shall we say, the negotiation of these dark clerics off the island. So we only get paid if we get the clerics off the island. That's the deal. What if they're good clerics? Oh, I will let you be the judge of that, but I can tell you, son, that is highly unlikely. Do you know why the pirates would have any interest in attacking the clerics or, you know, come into conflict with them at all whatsoever? Well, there are many thoughts on this matter that are floating amongst the guild members, but... We believe that the clerics and the pirates may have been in league with each other. Their criminal partnership, perhaps, going sour over greed. Hard to say, though. Mm. One thing is for sure, we need to secure the island before the pirates return and claim it for themselves. Will you help us? If we were to help you, how would we go about getting to this island? We will provide you with a large, sturdy rowboat. We will transport you to a nearby island where we have a contact. 
A guild contact named Major Ursa. He w keeps a lighthouse nearby. He has some information about the island and the approach that you might take. The island itself, I will tell you, is surrounded by steep cliffs, save for the southern end of the island, which is a vast beach. That is where we would direct you to land your rowboat. All right. I will consider your offer. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Farron Deer. Oh, I was going to say, uh, well, I'm going to, I'll look at the, Erin, are, you, you said you were looking for the Griffin's wing back at the, when we were talking about the, uh, the other thing, wink, wink, um, that we're not supposed to talk about. Yeah. Per, pirates know this whole side of the, the Azure Sea. Perhaps they will know more if there are any left. And they would owe us if we saved them from these dark clerics. We could find out more. And I could write a song about it. <laughs> yes, it is possible. That you is way to your words. What what was this guy's name again? This guy's name is Radovan Strozny. Yeah. Radovan. However, Radovan, are you trying to take us for fools? Pardon me? I'd like to make an insight uh, check to see if this person's attempt, like, kind of how he's trying if he's trying to manipulate us or anything sure you want us to go look into your business venture some dark clerics there's some pirates but you only want to pay us if we get the island for you. That's what I said. If we decide to take your job, you will pay us a hundred each, whether or not that is successful. What guarantees do I have that you will even pursue this matter Still and there. not leave town with a hundred gold in your pockets? Tell me that. We are yeah. not made of money. Anyone there? Yeah. Yep, we're all here. Yep. Well. What guarantees, what assurances can you give me? The same assurances that you would pay us. You okay. have my word as a member of the Smithies Guild. Mm. Which may or may not carry weight with you as your Mariner's Guild may or may not carry weight with me. Laszlo kind of looks over at Radovan and they kind of look at each other. We will consider your counteroffer. I must speak with the rest of the guild to if such a payment would be authorized. I can tell you that we have equipment that we would be willing to loan you for the job, perhaps that would serve the same purpose as this gold. I could give you credit for 100 gold pieces in our supply store. 
If you were to accept, we could make this deal today, right now. Otherwise, I will need a bit of time to discuss additional payments of gold and collection of dues. I'm, I fear that we do not have such time, but I will do it. This is important. All right. So I'm going to turn to Laszlo and Radovan and just, dear sirs, allow us to discuss your offer in privacy while we enjoy the rest of our claw wine, and we will let you know. Very well, gentlemen. Thank you for hearing us out, and we certainly hope that you would be willing to help us. In the meantime, I will make haste to inquire with the rest of the guild to determine whether or not payment, additional payments can be made at this time. Radovan, that sounds Master good. Runar, gentlemen, and he, he pounds the rest of his claw wine and he leaves. So now you're just there with uh, Radovan. Very well, gentlemen. And he gets up and walks over to a, a, the bar and sits down at the bar. And he pulls out some parchment and he uh, looks like, and he puts on some, uh, some glasses and he starts, he looks like he's doing some work. He's reading at the bar while he's drinking his wine. By this point, it's late afternoon, or mid-afternoon, let's say. It's probably like 3 o'clock. All right. It sure seems to me, if we, if we go to this island and we find out they're not bad clerics, we're going to have wasted our time. But if we do go to this island and we find it as bad clerics and we somehow manage to get this island, are we willing to part with an entire island for just 500 measly gold? Well, that is something to consider, although... Three I mean, men would find it hard-pressed to hold an entire island. Yeah. we got to look at our... You know... Uh, To be honest, I I prefer, you know, I'm more suited to life on the sea. Invading beaches is what I grew up doing. I gotta tell you, I'm I'm leaning towards this offer. Let the army go pursue those lizard men. But we already accepted that quest. Well, we didn't go in and tell them our offer. As you may remember, our... That's true, we did not. This, oh, fellow, this fellow caught uh, me on the stairs right before I went inside. <laughs> you speak. So we have a bit of a decision to make. And you still haven't looked at the, uh, the Who Watch Tower uh, job board either. You guys just have jobs falling in your lap. <laughs> well, Runar right. does. We're it just profitable friend. <laughs> it appears it's a raining opportunity right now. I would also suggest that um, turning down the favor of the town's council could have negative consequences other consequences mm. than this mariner's guild i should we should we see what the job board says and see if there's any other thing that we could possibly do that may or may not be more or less profitable yes <laughs> let's, let's walk the coast let it sink in for a little while before we make our decision. Very good. I'm going to take out my loot and just kind of pluck a couple strings, make sure it's still in tune, put it back on my back. All right, so are we done with our drinks? Oh, God, I hope so. This stuff is <laughs> not good. <laughs> I'll actually reach across and grab his and, and start having some of his, too. As far as claw wine goes, it's not bad. <laughs> Seafood and potatoes stew. Love it. 
And you get a little inspired. Got a kick. All right, so what, what's the plan from here? So on the way out, I'm going to let uh, Radovan know that he should hear from us soon. Very good. Uh, we'll send word whether or not we decide to take up his offer. Thank you. And so you, you should we head start back making out. our way towards the job board? Who will watch? Yeah, who will watch tower? Yeah. All right, you I guys. Really expected it, I really expected it to be like H E U L, but it's really just H O O L. It is. <laughs> it is H O O L. Yeah. Okay. So you uh, you make your way back across the shark fin bridge, and the market is is noticeably quieter as the end, as the day draws to an end. Although the tavern at the snapping line seems to be very rowdy, and you can hear from across the across this little bay over here, right in this area, you can hear a lot of uh, a lot of excitement coming from this joint right here called. The empty nest. The empty there, net. it. Uh, the empty net. Thank you. Uh, there is shouting and and music and uh, you even you look over and you see someone jumps off a, a really rickety balcony into the water below. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like Key West's uh, spring break <laughs> over there. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, it's like party. Yeah. Um, Somebody run by. They're doing body shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jello shots for like two silver. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's the, it's the for two silver. Frog. It really is Key West. It's the senior frogs of Saltmark. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Must be this high to sit at the bar. But you guys, you guys know of this place. Uh, this the empty net is kind of notorious for being. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the session, a nexus for smugglers, mercenaries, and even pirates, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you have, yeah, that's what you know about that place. Uh, all right, so you head back to the Hool Watch Tower. And uh, you can see on the job board there are, uh, there are three notices. The first one... Uh, just says goblins on the road. Exclamation point. Yep, exclamation point. Goblins uh, on the road to Seton. Town Goddard are offering five silver pieces for each set of goblin ears returned to the Hool Watch. So there's goblins. Then there is um, thief! Exclamation mark. Thieves have been plaguing the wharf, stealing, recently stealing a shipment of expensive mining gear off of one of the ships. Information re, uh, related to the apprehension of those responsible will be rewarded with 50 gold pieces. And then the third one is... Uh, is a another sort of uh, notice that says seeking assistance and protection for a caravan heading to Burl to uh, reconnect with the outpost pays 10 gold on the way to Burl and another 10 gold upon return to salt marsh Upon seeing this, Runar turns and says, Well, these offers don't look to be paying as much as what we got earlier. That is true. Though the thief, uh, I'm going to pull the thief notes down, I want to say. It's not like we can leave tonight to take this island if that's what we choose to do, or to find the lizard men. But we will need 
accommodations for the evening, and if I feel like we could get this one done tonight. True. I like the way you think. Let's pop over to the empty <laughs> net and do some body shots and some jello shots and then maybe dance and play some music and make some cheap money, but inquire about maybe this mining gear. We can go in disguise. Can we? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to laugh at that. I don't know if I can disguise myself. I'm pretty sure everybody around here knows who I am right now. I'll wear Maybe a hat. you should stay back. <laughs> I'll wear a hat and sunglasses like celebrities do. You could make a fake nose using my sealing wax. <laughs> Interesting. Either way, I could use a nail. Let's go check out this empty net. Okay, sweet. All right, so you make your way back down along the harbor, except this time on the western edge of the Kingfisher River, following the noise as it grows louder and louder. With the sun beginning to set, the night takes on a bit of a different atmosphere here in Salt Marsh. You arrive at the front of the front door to the establishment, and a young man comes, runs out, bursts through the doorway, finds himself hunched over uh, across the street in, a, in bushes, vomiting. Music blares through the doorway, coming from inside. Uh, to your to your level of satisfaction, Farandir, it's it's okay music, not great. <laughs> um, there is much carousing taking place here tonight and rowdy drinking. As you enter, it's hard to see, and your eyes are almost start to sting from the amount of smoke that hangs in the air. The place smells of smoke and it's hard to hear yourself even think with all of the noise. There are a couple of tables where it appears as though men are gambling. The people in this establishment look a little bit rougher than the people that you saw, for example, at the snapping line, uh, or definitely at the wicker goat. This is, this is the dive bar of town. Um, and people are hammered, and they are having a good time. You walk in, and uh, Runar, as you enter, uh, a large half-orc walks past you and just kind of you know, kind of shoulders you a little bit to move you out of the way and walks past you. Hmm. Quite the bar. You gentlemen still interested? Roll a perception I feel very check. At home here. Everybody, roll perception. Perception. It's kind of crazy. This place overhangs the water, and it's it's built up on these stilts, and it's like super rickety. Oh God. Yeah. Hey, tables are turned. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Runar's just like doo -dee doo. Yeah, Runar, you're you you seem to be kind of distracted by the smoke in your eye. Your eyes are kind of stinging and so you don't really see much, but uh, Erin and Ferrandir, you definitely notice that the, the townies are taking notice of you and there's there's a couple of people that kind of look over at you and so are these? they're kind of sizing you up a little bit. Are these guys like are they like townies or are they like sailors? Both. And, and, okay. and those two things aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. Right. Um, yeah, but they're, these are, this is like the rough and tumble, uh, fishermen, sailors, uh, ne'er-do-wells. This is where, this is where you go to get into trouble. Like a West Duluth bar. Correct. <laughs> this is West I Duluth. I live in West Duluth. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even think of a rough and tumble bar. I'm sure there is one somewhere. Come on in. It's like, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. What what do you do? Uh, I I think let me take it from here, gentlemen. I'm gonna jump up on the bar. I'm gonna oh god no. Yep, I'm gonna jump <laughs> up on the bar. <laughs> and I'm gonna cast I'm gonna cast Presto Digitation three times. I'm gonna make a giant glowing lightning bolt on the ceiling, and I'm gonna shoot sparks out of my out of my hands, <laughs> and and have a, a light musical note kind of sway through the air of everyone as I'm pulling my loot out. Nice. I'm nice. just going to kind of slowly slowly fly. And I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> start singing a, a really intense song about a bunch of people stealing a bunch of merch, uh, mining equipment and how I am there to find them and bring them to justice in the name of Heronius. Fantastic. Roll a uh, wow. roll a performance check with advantage. This is like a bad boys movie. Okay, I, I just rolled the toys. <laughs> We're just gonna slap the, the badge down on the table. <laughs> it's time. It's All right. Time. Oh fuck. Runar's at the bar <laughs> trying to <laughs> play I'm gonna hard. order a beer before this gets out of hand. You guys do not blend in well, apparently. <laughs> Runer's trying to shovel as much alcohol into his face as possible right now. So, a couple things, Farandir. You, you're up on top of the bar with yep. your loot. And there's a giant glowing <laughs> lightning bolt above yep. me. Yep, so and people sparks, are sparks. immediately like distracted by the lightning bolt that just appears overhead. And so the conversations <clears throat> really stop at that point. So it's it's dead quiet as you launch into this I mean, what it's, I'm thinking like kind of a, um, almost like a, uh, like a queen, like ballad, yeah, you know, like, ballad. yeah, a rock ballad, um, about, about how you have come to like, to catch the scoundrels that are plaguing the town of salt marsh and, and, you know, the heroes will save the day type of thing. Um, uh, <laughs> and people are just kind of staring at you, uh, you can see a couple of them are sort of like bobbing their heads up and down with the with the with your strumming, but mostly it's just kind of like it's like someone took the record player and just kind of scratched the needle across the record as they watch you and listen to you play this song. And then does, does anyone look like they might <clears throat> Cause some problems physically, as it were. Uh, with that, let's see. With the perception check that you rolled, which is very similar to what this would be, uh, yes. The answer to that is yes. <laughs> and the further, the further uh, clarification is many. Many people are like, they're kind of, now they're like looking you guys up and. You can see a couple guys are like rolling up their sleeves a little bit. Um, but the song plays through and ends. And it's just dead silent for a second. Oh, in, in that silence, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scream as loud as I can. Everyone gets a beer on. At that point, everybody just goes, yeah! And like... <laughs> The party gets started again, and the uh, the bartender comes over to you and, and, and slams his hand down on the on the bar and says, "I'll take payment for those beers right now, Sonny." And looks at you. How, how much would that payment be, good sir? <laughs> uh, let's see. I actually have a list here. <laughs> how many people are in this bar? Yep. Probably well, should have. Deciphered. I should have figured that out sooner. There are going to be... There's 28 people you're buying. 28 beers. 100 and... Uh, it's going to be 12 gold pieces. Damn, what the fuck? 
fuck are they drinking in this bar? Oh my god. Good shit. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> um. Yeah, weren't our ales like four silver earlier? Three silver? <laughs> yup. Oh shit. Um. I'm gonna flee. <laughs> oh no! Uh, you're gonna you're gonna flee. Okay. I'm gonna run away as quickly as I can. All right. R uh, roll initiative. Oh god. Everyone. Everybody. Uh, just fair and fair and. Uh, if you guys want to. <laughs> fair and near. Oh nice! You go fast. I'm getting awesome rolls today. Oh shit. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, let me see if I have. This is what I love about D and D. Is you never, you really never know what the hell the players are gonna do. <laughs> you just don't. <laughs> it's great. Get uh... inside the bar to Ryan and run away. <laughs> I only have seven gold. I I can't pay twelve. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. If I'd have had 12 gold, definitely would have paid him. Probably would have given him 13. All right. Um, so you have the initiative against the bartender. Um, so you get to go first. So you, what, describe what you're going to do. You're standing on top of the bar. You make the decision that you're going to bolt. Um, I'm going to run. I'm going to, um, uh, okay, so looking around me, I'm on the bar. Is the front door pretty close to the bar? Um, it's about 10 feet. Uh, I would say it's about 20 feet from the door. How many people are between me and the door? Oh, God. Wow. There are six people between you and the door. All right, I'm gonna make. And a trumpeter. Oh my. Um... Baron Deer's really <laughs> thinking about his life right now. You got uh, Runar and Irin both roll perception for me. I just want to see if you notice. You heard Baron Deer say what he said, but now do you notice that he's panicking? Oh shit. Yep. Yes, yes I Aaron, do. you do for sure. Oh god. Yeah. What? You both rolled natural twenties? <laughs> oh thank god. <laughs> yes. Jesus, guys. Come on. This is how we do it. Holy right. shit. Um, that's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna turn to Erin and kinda give him eyes like should we step in here? Um Roll initiative for the two of you, just so we have you in the order. We might as well. Right. Let's see if we can keep up the fucking... What not? Uh, initiative. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we know that you're going to do something. Seven. But, we, uh, we're not but I'm just you. too quick. You're too fast. All right, so... <laughs> All right, I'm going to... I have an idea. I think I know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I'm going to reach into my pouch, grab all of my gold, see that I only have seven. Let go of it and sprint towards the door along the bar. So you're going... Jumping what you... off of it when I have to. Fucking <laughs> coyote ugly in it. <laughs> okay, so you're dropping the, the coin on the bar. Yep, but just seven, because I only got seven gold. Okay. And then jumping off the bar and making a break and, for the door? And making a break for the door. Okay. So you drop the coins. As you drop the coins, you're able to jump from the bar, and the sound of coins hitting the bar and then spilling off to the floor causes a bit of a stir near where, you're, <laughs> where you are. People start kind of going for the, going for the gold. Louder than one would think. <laughs> yep. Well, it's just the immediate, the people like right next to where you dropped it that take notice. It's not like yeah. the whole bar. Um, <laughs> but 
you get to the door and then standing in front of you, blocking the door, is that large half-orc. Oh, shit. Uh, and he says, where do you think you're going? To my room at the uh, uh, the wicker goat to grab the rest of my money, sir. Uh, the that's your turn, okay? Yep. The the guy behind the bar says, "Stop that man!" <laughs> and then it's Runar's turn. What okay, do do, so, Runar? so basically, there's a big old half orc standing in front of the door. So the bartender can tell that he was shorted. Yeah. Did he recover the money or is it? No, just all he didn't even look at the money. He just saw this guy die, jump off the bar and make a break for the door. He knows what that means. <laughs> he's, he's, this yeah. isn't his first rodeo. Uh oh. <laughs> hmm. What are you going to do, Runar? Make peace or not make peace? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I'm not in the mood. I guess I'm not in the mood to start a, start a bar brawl. Oh, I was going to say, and Runar kills the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know, uh... I'm feeling like a little bit of a high roller right now. I'm going to go over to the bartender and say, Gentlemen, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Perhaps we can work something out here. All right, nice. Roll a persuasion check. Nice, that's what you needed. <laughs> <laughs> shitty roll tonight. I started laughing immediately. I was the, like, oh uh, man, I got you killed. The bartender uh, kind of gestures at that point. Um, is there anything else you want to do at this at that point? And I'm going to ask, uh, Erin, is there something that you want to do before coming back to the resolution of this? Um... I'm going to take a drink of my beer. Okay. Um, so the, when you say that, Runar, the, the uh, bartender makes a gesture. The half-orc uh, at the door kind of grabs Ferendir. Ferendir, he kind of grabs you at the collar and okay. starts to sort of march you back towards the bar. Do you resist or put up a fight? Uh, no. Okay. So he kind of, you kind of allow him to guide you back forcefully to the bar. Um, we don't need the initiative order anymore at this point. Uh, and the, the bartender looks at you and says, what do you propose to do to solve this problem? The man owes me gold. Only five though. You owe me and 12 these are gold. Exorbitant, exorb, well I dropped seven. Yeah, what happened to the money that he dropped? I'd, uh, you could roll a perception check. What money? <laughs> All right, I'm going to do that. Okay. Yeah, me too. I'm trying to find it. Rune, are you, uh, you don't see any gold anywhere that was, was, you saw it being dropped, but you don't see any of it remaining. Ferendir, you, Notice that a couple of people that were standing next to you are, are turn and start to walk away. Ooh, I'm going to I'm going to yell. They took the gold that I dropped. I had the money. And I'll point at them, obviously. <laughs> Fork, do your job. <laughs> uh, now. Tell me who's paying me? Want my 12 gold? Well, maybe we'll beat out of your friend here. I'll look at Runar and I'll, and I'll pleadingly I'll say, Runar, listen, I, I don't, I, um, uh, 
a little shy on gold. I know you're loaded, man. I'll play you a song. <laughs> I'm gonna turn to the I'm gonna turn to the bartender and I'll say, You'll get your gold, but there's no way that twenty eight beers are twelve gold pieces. At the dive bar. <laughs> At the dive bar. We know what this place is. I'll give you seven. Um, all right, roll a persuasion check. He looks at you and says, I don't know if you've ever been here before, son. But we don't take too kindly to the upper class coming in here and pretending to throw their money around and then try to make haste and leave without covering their bills. You can pay up. I'll take your seven gold, but I'm gonna have my friend here beat the other five out of your very talented, I must say, <laughs> bard. Tell you what. My friend's looking for a fight. What do you say we make this interesting? If you want to, you can step in and fight for him. Oh, oh I... Oh. <laughs> Are you challenging me, old man? Are you calling me a rich nothing? You are what you are. I'm looking for some entertainment. I don't think they've heard of you, Runar. I'm Runar Degg. I'm the Death Warren of Twelve Systems. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just like casually tapping my swords. Well, what, what do you say, Mr. Runar Degg? Tell that ugly lug to let go of my man. What's it gonna be? You gonna fight for the remainder of the bill? This, this, what's this? this is, <laughs> oh, you're gonna fight him? One of us should fight him. Somebody's gonna fight him or I want my 12 gold. <laughs> if, we, if we win, the round's free. Mm -hmm. You should tell your friend to shut his mouth. Unless he's singing a song, that is. I'll sing it. I'll take my loot out, and I'll start playing. We're, we'll get out of here. Uh, I'm going to sing this. We're get, we'll get out of here for free if we win this fight. But if we lose, we'll pay your 12 gold. And, and we'll put you in a chokehold. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, this guy's gonna be up the creek if without his bouncer. So this guy's a half orc. Yeah. <sighs> like a big, I'm sure scarred looking guy. Yeah, he's a big old ugly half orc with a one of his <laughs> one of his uh, tusks is broken, and he's got a scar across his face, and he's not wearing a shirt, and he's got a dagger on his belt. And a uh, he has a axe on his back, a battle axe. Nice. Oh, yeah. I'll nod to the bartender and I'll say. All right, great. So what happens next is that the, um, the bartender calls out and says, we've got ourselves a bit of entertainment, folks. And uh, they clear open a path or a, a, little, a little circle area. And the, the half orc starts kind of stretching and as he's kind of getting ready. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you bardic inspiration. 
come over and you know give you a couple back rub be like you got this man you got this thank you so much for protecting me i'm gonna beat you later i believe it <laughs> i really do <laughs> um the uh the bartender comes over who's gonna fight it's gonna be Iren. yeah okay um, the bartender asks, uh, or he, he tells you, Runar, he says, here's the deal. If you win, I'll keep your seven gold. If you lose, you'll pay me the 12, as agreed. Otherwise, none of you leave here alive. Um, another little, a little, a little guy comes, a little human guy comes over to you, um, Iren, and says, uh, Croc wants to know if you want to go full weapon or hand to hand. It's up to you. I mean, I, I don't know that we need to go full weapon. Fair enough. Um, is it obvious that he has any other security besides this one bouncer? Obvious, not as in like they have a uniform, like they're not wearing the chilies, the red chilies uniform shirt or anything. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have any flair. How much <laughs> flair does the bouncer have? <laughs> Got a little metal. <laughs> seven men at once. There's not a bunch of guys giving out shots. No, <laughs> it's it's pretty hard to tell. So he's saying, even if we. He, he says that you owe him seven win. gold, and if you lose, you pay him 12 total. So basically, it's like a five five gold bet that you're placing. On me, your untrusted, un, untested new companion. <laughs> I'll take that bet. Yes. I dropped all my money. I can't take that bet. <laughs> it's all right. I got it. All right. So I nod to the bartender. Okay. Deal. So what happens next is that there are a couple of people that you think are probably working for the bar that circulate through the the crowd and are basically people are placing bets at this point. And one of them comes up to uh, to you, Erin, and says, "What'll be? You want in on this action?" No. And then he comes over to Runar. What about you? You want to place an additional bet on your friend here? I'm going to casually toss him a gold piece. Okay. All right. And then it comes over go to up. you, Ferrandir. What about you, Troublemaker? Um, so am I being, like, monitored or sequestered or anything like that right yeah, now? Yeah, you're, you're being watched. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not going to partake then. Okay. That the guy that's doing taking the bets and spoke to you comes out and says, "All right, here we go. The rules are this. There's no rules. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Fight until someone either dies or concedes." <laughs> and uh, right now I attack. Uh, burp, 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 burp. <laughs> well, we'll roll initiative first. How about that? <laughs> all right, all right. There's no rules. Very well. You're going for the surprise I, attack? I attack. I'm going to ready myself, hand on sword, uh, take it, uh, getting his back, just to make sure nobody tries to jump in at any point. What'd you get? <clears throat> a nine? Okay. Yep. A lowly nine. Oh, boy. I now have... Uh, Come on. Shit roll. Leather, leather gloves with like iron embellish, steel and iron embellishments on like the knuckles and wrists. Okay. Do you, uh, I also gave you bardic inspiration. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that. Does he get to add that to his initiative or the? They don't um. No. I can you use. To, I have to, to use choose it, it right. Every one. Yeah. And it's a D six. Yes, D6 um, on any, D20 once roll. within the next 10 minutes, 
You can roll the die and add the number roll for one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Okay. Yeah. Oh can, yeah. Here, I'll, yeah. I'll link it for you. Cool. All right, that's great. So you got you got advantage, or I mean, uh, bardic inspiration. So this big half orc just just smiling as much as a half orc can smile and comes at you. Um, let's do this. Let's bring you guys over here just so we can kind of see what's going on. Does the orc have to roll? Yeah, what's his initiative? He got a 22. Nice. You guys, you can't see the initiative? Nope. No. Huh. I only see Aaron's. I don't see... That's weird. Yeah. Oh, you know why? Because he hasn't nope. been added to the token <laughs> layer yet. Now can you see it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, now we're turn. now we're all looking good yeah. here. Okay. He uh, he swings. Uh, ten. No. So he comes up to you. He's kind of bobbing and weaving a little bit, and he takes a right hook at you, and you just kind of duck it easily, and step yeah, out just, of the way. You just give the shoulder raise. Yep. Uh, but he does have multi-attack, so he takes, as you do that, he comes at you with a left jab. Oof. Uh, 21. Yeah, that'll do. And that's going to be for four bludgeoning damage. All right. And now it's your turn. I kind of, you know, I, we kind of st step back and I like... Give him a nod, you know, and then I uh, enter in. Since I'm so much lower than him, um, stature-wise, how tall is this guy? Uh, he's half orc size, so he's probably like six, maybe just around six foot. I would nice. say, yeah. Ugh, with my fists, which doesn't work very well. He doesn't have an eight armor class, does he? Uh, he does not. All right. He ha yeah, no, he doesn't. Um, I will use... Uh, you could use that inspiration. Mm -hmm. Not after not uh, he finds out. You have to, yeah, you have to use it before you know the, the result yeah. of the roll. I'll make the decision before the determination. All right. And I will use my bonus action. Um, to make another attack. Uh, with my fists. Okay. Oh yeah, that yeah. hits. Yeah. For four damage. Uh, you you where are you punching him on that one? Um, like right in the right in the like the front of the like the meat of the thigh. Oh, okay. So down low. Got it. I mean, it. I'm like four two. Yeah. Right. I yeah, mean, so I guess you you give him like I a, come a, up to like his like low chest, but yeah, yeah. like yeah. So you kind of drop down a little bit and just take a right hook into his thigh, kind of not yeah. trying to knock him down a little bit. Yeah. As you do that, he kind of buckles a little bit and come and kind of bends over and you're towards you, as he kind of you know he's buckling on his on his uh, right leg. Or I guess it'd be his left leg. Anything else you want to do? Oh, that's a fl if I hit with flurry of blows, which I was not doing. Um, nope. Okay. So he kind of he kind of drops a little bit, but then he comes at you uh, with an elbow to trying to elbow you in the face with this first hit. Uh, where is it? There we go. 
11. Nope. Yeah, again, you he misses you as you just, you're a lot shorter than what he's normally used to fighting. But he comes around with a left hook. 15. Uh, no. And misses you again. So he takes two two yeah. swings at you and, and misses. He's like, oh, yeah, shit, just like, this guy's faster than I, I just, thought he was going to be. I just do the... Um, you know, kind of the the, the boxing like head bob. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then I will come in with another attack. Thirteen. Um, it is successful. You hit him. Nice. For six bludgeoning? Wow. wow. Yeah. Okay. So this is like a, just a straight shot to his gut. Boom! Oh! <laughs> um, and his head and comes then, down low now, like right in front of you. All right. I will... Um, He's doubled over. Now, uh, kind of learning some of these abilities. So I'm going to spend a key point. Okay. Um, now that his head is in range, spend a key point to make a flurry of blows. Nice. That hits as well. So nice. there's. Oh, oh, sweet! It's just automatic. No, that was the first one. So there's one flurry of blows attack. Um, Doing some monk I shit. Will, I will, yeah, right. Um, I will re require him to uh, get pushed back uh, 15 feet unless he succeeds at a strength saving throw of a DC 14. Is this flurry of blows? Yeah, this is open hand technique. Whenever you hit with one or one of your flurry of blows attacks, you can impose one of the following oh, yeah. on the target. Either it falls prone unless it makes a successful save, or it's pushed back unless it's make a successful save. All right. Or Sweet. it just can't make a reaction until the end of the, uh, the end of my turn. All right. Uh, Twelve. Twelve does not succeed. So he's so he pushed, gets pushed back. back. Five, um, ten, fifteen, and then I will, I will just like as I as I punch him, and he kind of wheels back. I just scrape across kind the of, floor. I just kind of, I just kind of follow him up, and I have one more flurry attack. Uh, because flurry blows gives you yeah, you two, get two uh, strikes. Jeez. Oh nice. yeah, that hits. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're the one fighting him and not me. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Nice. That's awesome. That's your turn? Yep. I'll just kind of look at him. He staggers backwards and he kind of like falls into some people that are around the edges and they kind of lift him up. And people are yelling and screaming, and he gets lifted up, and he looks pretty dazed. And they they push him back in, and he comes at you, uh, and he's going to take a, a just a huge swing right at your head with his right hand. Sixteen. Uh, uh, misses. Oof, he misses, but he's going to come in and try to knee you in the stomach with a 13 and he misses again. He just basically like goes right past you. So he, he ends up like right here. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think um, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna make a, kind of a, a, a kick a kick attack, um, really more of like a stomp, like I'm like I'm s like stepping, like on his foot or whatever, um, 
with my foot. Okay. Uh, and that does not succeed. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You stomp down and you kind of twist your ankle a little bit as it slips off of his foot. I kind of smile and then punch him in the dick. Ooh. With my, with my flurry of blows. There are no blows. Or right now, I'm not going to use flurry of blows this one. This is just going to be my bonus attack. With a dick punch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Seven, seven damage to the dick. Yep. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. He's got to go prone with that, oh, right? Oh, this poor fucking board. <laughs> Just came to work. <laughs> and then this bard came and sang on the bar. <laughs> he, uh... He's, like, super dazed, and he's kind of staggering around. And he reaches over and grabs a bar stool and comes at you with it. Oh. All right. And misses, but he swings at you again with it and hits. <coughs> uh, four. Uh, four bludgeoning damage, and the and the the uh, the barcel just shatters as he cracks you across the back with it. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of nod to him and like flex my back a little bit because uh, a as a dwarf I have a big back, but b yeah. as a as a smith, my back oh, is god. It's just ripped. massive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh god. Um, oh god. And uh, I say, well, if that's how it's gonna be. Give him another dick punch with my fists. Oh, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Explode. <laughs> yeah. He goes down on his knees right now, so right. he's basically eye level with you, or maybe you're will, even above him a little bit. I will spend my uh, key point to do another flurry of blows. Yep. Um, so this one is going to be like a nice just making mince classic this uppercut just right to the chin. And he just kind of goes backwards now, like um, like slow motion as he's kind of And I like... will I will uh, I will force him to make a uh, I think it's a dexterity saving throw. Yep. Yep. Deck save. To knock him down. Yep. He saved. Uh, 24. DC 14. Yep. Yep, he saves. 24. Okay. Okay. Um, well, you guys can't see my rolls, can you? No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, 24. I was going to ask you about that earlier, but I didn't want to interrupt. So. And yeah. then, um, yeah, I'll follow it up with another. Just whooping this guy's ass. Another uh, flurry attack. Uh, that one oh. misses somehow. Ooh. All right. He just, he must like, he kind of slips and falls just as you're trying to punch him. Yeah, he's like wheeling out of the way and like kind of flailing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he comes, he comes at you though. He's tenacious, this guy. All right. All right. He's going to come at you with his fists. Uh, 20. Yeah, that'll uh, hit. Four bludgeoning damage. So he, right. he just punches you square in the, right in the brow, right above your nose. <clears throat> you feel a little bit of blood trickle down your nose and out into your beard. Nice. Uh, Meanwhile, his face is pretty bloody and yeah. his his balls are smashed <laughs> <laughs> he's got an obvious limp yeah that's gonna be permanent <laughs> uh, 
I am not the GM. I cannot make that do that. Um, I will... I will make another attack Do against it. this poor fellow. Oof. Miss. That one misses. All right. I am going to use uh, a point of key to let me just double check how this works. Um, to make a dodge action. Okay. You can step of the wind. Um, and I will um, use my uh, dwarven fortitude ability to spend a hit die. For Step of the Wind, just to clarify, mm -hmm. um, it says that you can use a key point to take the disengage or dash action on, as a bonus. Oh, my, I think it was around one. Um, I think ah, you're thinking patient, oh, defense. patient defense. Patient yep. defense. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, use patient defense, spend a key point, make a dodge action. So, you're going to use your bonus action. Got it. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, and, then and then use your dwarven resilience. Dwarven or fortitude. fortitude yeah. Okay. That's a pretty awesome feat to take for a dwarf monk. Could have been better, but that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> you take what you can get. Yeah, and plus three, and he has disadvantage to attack me. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, for the dodge action. Got it. Okay. Well, he's going to come at you. Or is that the end of your turn? Um, yeah. Okay. So he is going to come at you with fists ablazing, although he's moving pretty slow at this point. And he's going to have disadvantage for just the first attack or his whole turn? The whole turn. Got it. Uh, 22. So four. Wow, with disadvantage? Yeah, I rolled two 22s. Nice, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the first attack, so four bludgeoning. And the second attack. Uh, he misses with a five. Nice. But he does kind of shuffle. He kind of moves around you. And it's your turn. All right. Uh, I will. I will um, attack his thigh again so you drop down and punch him oh Boom. shit yeah ah. Ah. wow that's that's aggressive <laughs> that is really aggressive <laughs> how does he how does he like that he doesn't okay he uh he doesn't like it he either. he falls <laughs> down on the that leg gives way and he kind of falls down and he's so he's on one leg basically and on a knee. I I say to him Do you wanna call this good? He's thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll give him a sec to respond before I maybe use some more attacks on him. <laughs> he uh he he doesn't respond to you during your turn. But you can oh. tell he's thinking about it. All right. Um, 
I will. I will. Uh, this guy's been a good fighter, so I will. Uh, I will step back. Okay. And uh, not attack him again this round. How far do you back off from him? Um, just like, I mean, still like engaged, I guess. Not enough to, uh, like, not enough to where he could, you know, a, a, a attack me for free if he wanted to. Right. Um, but like. Not, uh, not attacking him. Okay, you you're watching pretty closely, and he stands back up, and he, uh, you can tell he looks over into the crowd for a second, and then he turns back to you and smiles and comes at you. Nice. I gave you your chance. Uh, twenty one. So four, four bludgeoning. He cracks you in the side of the head with a right hook. And then Oof. he comes at you with a, a punch to the, to the stomach and misses with an 11. All right. And then he puts his fists up to try to, to basically to kind of block. But he's, uh, he's swaying back and forth pretty bad. He's it's, looking pretty rough. Yeah. All right. I'm going to use uh, inspir my inspiration. Regular inspiration, not my bardic inspiration. Okay. So. For advantage? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Six bludgeoning. And a key point uh, to flurry some blows. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Um, and then I will. Oh, I will uh, uh, force him. Uh, to uh, make a deck save or fall prone. Okay. He falls prone. All right. And, uh, and now I will, I will, I will kind of look at him. I will like look up and look out at the crowd and I will say, it's time to drop the hammer. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to use my bardic inspiration uh, to add a uh, D6 to my last uh, flurry of blows here to hit. Ooh, I might need it. Oh, yes. Wow, nice. <laughs> <Beautiful>. <laughs> Sweet. Seven damage. Yeah. This is like, uh, you know, like old school Hulk Hogan <laughs> drop fist. Yeah. You know, kind of the little short hop and then. <laughs> uh, as you stand up from that attack, there's no movement. And he just lays there in a pile. Uh, he, because of his. Uh, what does he have? Relentless endurance or whatever it is that yeah. half works have. Yeah. He uh, yep. he is able to sort of fight unconsciousness, and he uh, he tries to get up, but it falls down. He can't he can't quite get to his feet, and a couple other people come out and and try to help him, but he's done. And the and the crowd goes wild, and they're shouting and yelling and screaming, and uh, you won your first. Your first bar battle in in uh, Salt Marsh. Beautiful. Huzzah. Nice. Huzzah. Here is. And just like that, Cold people fighter. just kind of go back to their normal 
you know, the, 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 the bookie pays out the, the bets and collects his money and people just kind of go back to drinking and carousing and um, the, the half orc is kind of carried off to a table over in the corner and, and uh, taken care of by some of his buddies. And the bartender says, well fought, sir, well fought. Thanks. And he, uh, he collects his seven gold from you, Runar, as, yeah. as agreed upon. And, but I, I uh, earned one, I earned. You did, you made, you made one gold from the bookie. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just gonna scratch out six. And he, uh, he reaches over and says, the name's Kreb, Kreb Shanker. And he reaches out to shake your hand. Uh, ear, ear in. Oh, the Ooh. bartender? Yeah, the bartender does. Well fought, okay. dwarf, well fought. Thank you. Tell me, you work at the mines? No, no. I didn't think so. Where the, where'd the three of you come in from? I haven't seen you around town before. I tend to know what's going on around here, if you know what I mean. From the other side of the Azure Sea. Hmm, it's a long ways. It is. Roll, uh, is that a, you're not from the far end of the Azure Sea, are you? Yeah, the Iron Hills is on the other. Is, it's on the way is, other side? Is on the, uh, is on the. Uh, oh shit. East side, west side, east side. Yeah, yeah cause we're on the western edge of the Azure Sea. Holy cow, all yeah. right, I'm gonna have to read your backstory again. I guess I didn't pick up on that. Um, and then the bartender looks to you, uh, Runar, and says, Heard of this one, though. Sounds like you got yourself into a bit of trouble out there on the Soul of Winter with Windrune and his crew. Well, uh -oh. you're welcome to stick around if you'd like. I know you've got the coin. Enjoy your night, fellas. Barkeep, a round of drinks for me and my companions. This, this dwarf here, my friend, deserves a, ra a beer. Right away. And he, and uh... Two he, for your bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, comes back with a couple mugs for each of you. Uh, it's gonna cost... Uh, oh... He's gonna charge you one silver. Alright. How much for... Oh, you get normal prices? I had to pay... <laughs> 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 how much, how much I haven't I... played a rock ballad. <laughs> it's a sliding scale. How much should I buy two, two, two rounds for the bouncer? Uh, that's going to be eight copper. Okay. I'll just give him the silver. Okay. You boys looking for work around here? He says as he's like washing mugs and serving beers. He's got some help back there so he doesn't have to pay a ton of attention to the bar. We are looking for work, sir. Have you heard of anybody offering coin for hard labor? Depends what kind of labor you're looking for. There's all kinds of jobs to be had in Salt Marsh these days. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm specifically looking for some really high-end mining equipment myself. <laughs> you don't look like much of a miner. <laughs> I don't. I can look like I can be a lot of things. You're funny, friend. You best be careful about how you throw your money around, though. Get yourself into some trouble. Listen. I don't have. I don't have any money. <laughs> if you're looking for some, if you're looking for some hard labor, the fighting kind. There's a group of group of fellas putting together a little operation down on the wharf this evening around midnight. Out in front of the uh, the market. Ask for Emric. They'll be standing out in front of the. out in front of the snappy line, midnight. What kind of work? The hard kind. 
have a good evening, fellas. And at that point, he kind of walks away and starts pouring beers for other people. <clears throat> hmm. Well, we didn't find anything out about the tools. What do you guys think? What should we do? The night is young. Yeah. Well, where did the uh, where did the um, the the posting about the thief say that the equipment went missing from? Uh, the wharf. And now it's that's that area south of like near the market there. Mm-hmm. There's a chance that if uh, we go to this wharf following up this work, maybe we'll find out more about this missing equipment. Although I am drunk, so. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this isn't the kind of work we want to get ourselves into either. Yeah, I'm not necessarily a fighter as I pluck up my loot. So by this point, it's getting pretty late in the evening, <clears throat> and I think you had mentioned you were going to try to get back to some of these other other people, but that's no matter. Um, what would you like to do with the rest of your evening? <sighs> Maybe find a less less divey bar. <laughs> less, yeah, Should a, we go someplace back to where it? we don't necessarily have to watch ourselves. Should we go back to the Wicker Goat, the tavern that we're staying at? That's where we're staying, right? Yep. It is, yeah. Right. I don't know if I can afford that anymore. Come along, Bard, I got you. All right, all right, let's do it. <laughs> all right, so you leave the bar, the empty net, and make your way back to the Wicker Goat. And uh, I think that's where we'll end for tonight, since it's like 10, right. 15 already. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we'll pick up we'll pick up there at the Wicker Goat again. Um, where, where we'll discuss our options. Yeah. <laughs>